the conversation right now. No sooks, no lefties, just the way we like it here this Thursday night. None other than Michael Kroger, fresh back from his trip to uh, Israel, and Caroline Marcus, who always breaks news at skynews.com.au and on air. So, Michael... The trap for the opposition is about whether they back them or not. I think that's a simple solution. You just constantly try to amend the legislation to what you want and then you end up backing in the tax cut. Then you're able to go to an election with uh, the want to remove a bracket. But let's deal with the broken promise. Is the broken promise going to mm. stick or is the spin of the government, which is, yeah, but is going to be all people remember because they're $17 richer a week? Well, mate, the answer to that is very clear. So the polling, the polling organisations which will be doing surveys on the tax cuts now will be only asking one question, which is, are you in favour or against the changes to the tax system? And a majority will say they're in favour. Correct. Obviously, because the vast majority of people are getting them. However, what they're not going to do is ask question number two, which is the fundamental question, which is this. Do you believe a promise made to you by Anthony Albanese... And a majority of people are going to say, I wouldn't believe a word he says. So, mate, I, I, I am shocked. Even at my advanced age, I am shocked at what this bloke's doing. If you thought the voice was a big enough disaster, he's now gone and broken this promise. I mean, what is this guy thinking? It's bad enough for the $275. No changes to super he promised. How many hundreds of times is he on the record of saying no changes to the policy? I mean, I can't believe. Uh, 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 where are the hard-headed people in the Labor Party saying, Alba, you cannot possibly do this in a million years? And I saw all those nervous ministers at the, at the press club today thinking, hmm, maybe if Alba gets hit by a bus, not that we're directing the bus <laughs> towards him, but maybe he does, I might, uh, I might front up. Ah, uh, mate, this is, this is a spectacular own goal. No one's going to believe this bloke at the next election when he's asked to give, give, give a commitment about not taxing capital gains on the family home because we know Chalmers is in favour of it. No one's going to believe him. When he's mm. asked to, to commit that there's not going to be changes to the capital gains tax, no one's going to believe him. Um, when he's when he talked about negative gearing, franking credits and gives commitments, no one's going to believe him. No one will ever trust this guy again on tax. And, Paul, I think he, he's certainly going to lose his majority and this guy is now at, at great odds of, uh, you know, repeating what happened in the 1930s, losing after one term. Yeah, now, Caroline, again... The message that Sherry Markson had for us in the previous hour was that the talking point that Labor MPs go back to their communities with for Australia Day and beyond is this is the, and I quote, solution to cost of living. $17, sorry, $15 a week, $22 a week, $32 a week or $41 a week. They might need a new talking point. Yeah, maybe. And I, I don't think that anyone's electorate is that stupid as to just swallow that um, line, doesn't matter who's saying it, because we know that Albanese has been promising that he's going to do something for cost of living, but at the same time, we have not seen that at all. While he's been promising $275 cuts to power bills, that hasn't happened. He's been promising not to touch the tax cuts, that's now happened. That He's been promising the, he'll get the voice up, that hasn't happened. He's been promising to do politics differently and have some integrity um, when it comes to politics. That hasn't happened. What has he actually done that he's said he's going to do at the end of the day? But, look, I also think that he has been preempting this for a while, which is why he keeps getting asked at every press conference or opportunity whether he's still committed to these tax cuts. We all had a feeling that this was on the line, and he did preempt it somewhat by continuing to trot out the line that... Uh, his government had not changed their position on this when he was asked if he was still committed to it. Now suddenly he has changed his position. So you could sort of see it coming mm. at the same time. Now, I'll ask the team uh, back in the control room, bring up the seats that I was mentioning before, because, again, the majority of this mm. government, which I think was always going to go at the next election, but the stupidity, the absolute stupidity, and you've had the same conversations I have today, no doubt, Michael, is that... Um, the majority is only a couple of seats, so you can't afford to... It's not like the uh, GST where you had 90 MPs and you could afford to burn a backbench. The seats of Higgins, Benelong, Reid, and also the one in Western Australia, they're all above national mean income. They've all got almost half of their population as managers or professionals, and these are all the people that the PM screwed today. 
Well, mate, I live in Higgins. Uh, the Liberal Party have pre-selected Katie Allen, who's the former member there. She lost in 2022, not because of her, but because of the swing against the government at that stage. She was a very popular member. 100%. Uh, she will win Higgins back now. I think it's fair to say Katie Allen is going to win Higgins back. They're going to lose. And you saw the Labor member uh, get up in the caucus yesterday and say, is this a good idea, this whole tax cut thing? Um, <laughs> and uh, they said, oh, yes, yes. Um, she's thinking that's not a good idea. Uh, so the Liberal Party will win back Higgins. I mean, he's only got to lose 11, you see, because, because he's on 78. If he loses 11, he's on 67. Dutton, you can say, is on, you know, 57, 58, depending on how you play with a couple of independents. If he gets 11, he gets in front of Albanese, and then it's a matter of the Teals and the independents to make up the difference, to, to, to decide who's going to be in government. Well, from history, those Teal seats will go majority of the coalition because they're in, co they're in Liberal Party, National Party areas. So I think Dutton has got an exceptionally mm. good chance of winning now. Um, but I think, Paul, it's time for Albo to keep one promise. One promise seems to have dropped off the dropped off the national stage in recent months with all this stuff about his lie of the tax cuts. Don't forget that on election night, he committed to implementing the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. And, mate, thus far, he's only tried one part of it. So I think it's time for Albo to return to his roots, <laughs> recommit to the Makarata Commission, uh, reparations. Uh, that's exactly what Middle Australia wants to hear. Brad, what's his name at Woolworths, can, can you know, have a... You know, he can go bananas over that. Uh, this bloke, the left yeah. can't trust him because he's not going to proceed with the Uluru Statement, right? He's given that away as a bad, a bad idea electorally. He's basically lied to all, all, all the people over 180,000 uh, and the rest basically going to grab the money and say, you can't trust this bloke in a million years. And as I said earlier, all these tax increases yeah. that Albo was heavily in favour of in 19, well, let's see how he deals with them uh, in early 25, mate, when the election will be held. All right, let's talk about tomorrow and Australia Day. Um, I had the experience of being able to go to, uh, to Cabramatta in the southwest of Sydney. In fact, I want to play this for you now, which was the experience that I had, which was to go and check in on Frank Carboni, who was, of course, the mayor of Fairfield. He told us that everyone was, was very pro-Australia Day. It was fascinating to go, to watch, because that's exactly what I felt when I experienced the opportunity to be there. Compare that to a lot of the self-hating and self-loathing that happens over on Channel 2 and in the... Turnbull Times, but here's my experience talking about Australia Day with a lot of people who are part of a community where 79% of them speak something other than English at home. Our mate, the Mayor of Fairfield, Frank Carboni, says this part of Australia loves Australia Day. So why not come and have a look for ourselves and talk to our fellow Aussies? What do you like celebrating on that national day? Uh, food, barbecues, <laughs> beer. <laughs> what does Australia mean to you? Um, helping everyone out, you know, everyone's your mate. Multicultural. What do you like about Australia? Um, I like all, and then I want to live here a long time because I have kids and the husband here. I like all, everything, people, everything here. Uh, everything is how multicultural it is, and, um, and everyone is so nice and respectful to each other. Well, just everything. Yeah. Oh, we just celebrate everything. This is it. Well, you're a fit bloke in a singlet. You qualify. Happy Australia Day. Of course. This is a country worth celebrating? It's worth celebrating. The best country in the world. That's why I come. I'm glad I come here. You looking forward to Australia Day on Friday? Always. Good man. What, uh, what's worth celebrating? What do you try to do on that day? What do you think about on that day? I want to think about the same time that when I come into Australia. People be friendly, people be opening, and people looking for have a good time. So that, what has this country given you? A lot. A lot. And I bet you've given plenty in return. I give a lot of return and I give a few children, some beautiful children. But you try to keep your tax down, right? Oh, always. Yeah, good, good, good. Always, yeah, always, yeah. Always, always. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. See, his, his eyes lit up there, his eyes lit up. Um, Caroline, I love that idea because, again, we hear from lots of people, uh, including a lot of people who may well have uh, have been here for multiple generations. It was nice mm. to see people from an area where, as I said, majority they don't speak English uh, mm. at home, but they're all in on tomorrow. Yeah, it's so true. And I began my career in journalism here in Australia in Fairfield, great part of the country. And it just shows you what we've seen reflected in so many polls and from speaking to so many migrants or first or second generation Australians that they love 
being here. They're proud of being Australian. They're proud of Australia Day because for them, living here is an opportunity to for a better life. That's why they came here, to escape or get away from uh, somewhere else that they, they frankly saw as not as good as Australian. Let's celebrate the benefits. And as a migrant, I say, happy Australia Day, everyone. Tomorrow, celebrate it loud and proud. We will. Well done, darling. All right, now, Michael, compare that to some idiot who decided to uh, chop down the um, Captain Cook statue, trying to treat it like Saddam Hussein's. What did you think of that today? Hmm. Oh, that was great, wasn't it? What a great effort by that, uh, that clown. Mm. I have to apologise to the rest of Australia from from as a Victorian uh, for the fact that a lot of these problems in this country appear to emanate from Victoria. We have a nasty, a nasty underbelly in this state of anarchists, uh, Antifa people, the ones that attacked Andrew Bolt, uh, neo-Nazis, uh, Jew haters, left and right in Victoria. Uh, you see a lot of this stuff in Victoria that you don't see elsewhere in this country. And a lot of work has to be done by either this Labor government or the next Liberal government to start lecturing people here and teaching people about proper Australian values and to flush out, arrest, jail, whatever we need to do to the people that hate Jews, the Nazis, the Antifas and the anarchists, uh, the ratbags who are denigrating this state and making this state a less safe place to live. So it was disgusting, yeah. it was sick, but this is an unbelly in this state, mate, and it ain't good. And, Paul, you know what? It exposes... Well said. Enjoy your Australian... It exposes the lie that just yeah, changing really fast, the date. Caroline, if possible. Yeah, changing the date is going to fix things because these people want an end oh. to the Australian that we know today.